Okay, I'm going to turn things over now to uh, Gay Gilbert to kick things. I'm sorry, to Amanda. Hey, but, but, to kick but. things off. <laughs> Hi, this is uh, Gay Gilbert. I'll, I'll start, and Amanda can uh, kind of chime in also. Uh, I, we're both um, very excited about um, uh, today uh, as the culmination of our two-week vult- uh, virtual institute for reemployment connections. Uh, we are most anxious to hear um, from the states and uh, about uh, sort of what the work of the last hey, two weeks okay. has um, has culminated in for each of you. Um, I do want to do a couple things here. Um, first of all, I want to um, say that there was an extraordinary amount of work that went into providing this virtual institute for you this the past two weeks. Um, Jen Pirtle obviously was an absolute um, saint through the whole thing, and, and her team uh, uh, and, more, and the whole OWI team actually uh, really supporting this. Uh, obviously, our help with Mayor and Mayor to uh, to uh, both provide you with tools and facilitation and, and guidance throughout this process has been uh, enormous. Uh, so just um, and and then of course our pilot states who really stepped up to the plate and really um, gave lots of their time and energy to help uh, support you as you went through this planning process. So just a big thank you to all of them. Um, but today is all about you guys, uh, uh, and we're wanting to, uh, as I said, hear, hear from you on, on all things uh, good that you accomplished over the last two weeks and sort of how this has set the stage for your work uh, moving forward and you're getting to a plan in January. Um, I will say just a couple things. Um, I, I am aware that not all of the states were able to bring all of their partnerships together through all of the process. Um, that's the one thing that I would like to say to the states now as you move forward. You absolutely must do this or you will not be successful. You need to bring your entire team together. Uh, and I'm hoping as you, um, and Rick, maybe as the, each of the states reports out today, we can get them to sort of talk about what team members they have with them um, to be, um, uh, so we can kind of get a feel for, and flavor for how the teams are working together. Uh, but to get to not only your official plan, but actually to do the work, the partnerships are absolutely um, critical. So um, I will. I know Jen has already talked with you about the additional technical assistance efforts available. Um, we are strongly encouraging all of you to take advantage of the on-site um, uh, assessments and uh, and to work with your states to further your reemployment efforts. Uh, and you're getting that priority uh, with whether or not you proceed with one of the tools or not. This is an opportunity for your state to just simply advance its own efforts. So I really look for, hope that you'll be um, uh, 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 taking advantage of that. And we'll need to know that uh, relatively quickly. Uh, I think we've uh, given, uh, I think by early January, is that in our time? Okay, I think by early January we need to absolutely know one way or the other whether you're going to be doing that. Um, we also, I know that many of you have uh, identified an interest in continuing to, to have more technical assistance from the pilot states. Uh, I think one of the things we're going to ask you to do is to uh, first go to the resources that have already been provided by the pilot states. They have given so generously of their time throughout this institute and with regard to the products that we've offered up through the website. Um, I think we'd like you, before you uh, ask again, to, to connect with a particular pilot state that you really make the effort to go out to the website and, and look at what's there and also to view the webinars that they provided over the course of this week. Uh, and again, not all of your teams were there all the time and those things were recorded exactly for that purpose so that you could go out there and get that. So um, again, I'm, I'm very excited to hear about um, sort of the result of your work. Before we do that, I'm going to let Amanda jump in here. <laughs> thanks, Gay, and hi, everybody. Um, I just want to second the, the thanks to the team here at ETA and with Mayor and to all of you in the, the states, um, the early pilots and, and the, new, the new virtual planners. Um, I, I know, as Gay said, it is hard to, to make sure that all of your partners in the room, but it is absolutely essential. Um, I also know how hard it is to take time out to do 
planning um, and how essential that is. So I, I just want to, um, again, thank you for your time and efforts, and I really look forward to hearing how the last couple of weeks have gone and, and what to look forward to. Um, and just know that, you know, as, as we looked to the, the early pilot states for this, we'll be looking to you um, going forward to reach out in the future with other states that haven't had um, the strategic planning opportunity. Uh, so we will continue to, um, to be in touch with you and, and thank you for your efforts. So I'll turn it back to uh, Rick to kick us off. Well, thank you, Amanda, and thank you, Gay, too, not only for your opening comments today, but for the commitment that you've made for, for uh, dedicating Jen and Wendy and Heather and all the rest of the folks in your organizations that have been working really every day on this. Uh, we appreciate your leadership and uh, making yourselves available today. And let me, before we begin the state presentations, um, just quickly lay out our agenda for today. Um, today, as Gay said, is all about you. Um, this is, uh, remember, about eight to 10 minutes maximum per state. Um, Gary, I'm gonna ask you, I'm, I apologize for not having done it before now, but I know you're a master. If you would bring up a clock or timer for state presenters to see as they're presenting so that we, I don't have to dog people or be rude, but we're gonna keep pretty close to that timeline uh, because we don't want to cheat, you know, the states at the, at the other end of the alphabet, as it were, and we want to leave some time for feedback and for questions, too. Remember, too, that as we hear these presentations, as I've been saying in the last couple of webinars, you know, the end of the Institute is not the end of the project, it's just the end of the beginning. And really what we're hoping for today, as you guys know, it's just a status report. We're very, very well aware that numbers of you came to this and spent a lot of time in the last two weeks getting geared up, getting team members on board, expanding your team member roster. I mean, the amount of effort that we saw in the last second half, if you will, once you guys turned the halfway mark, um, it really started to gallop at full pace. A lot of progress has been made, as many of you have noted in my separate conversations, in a matter of the last days. But there's more work that you're going to be doing, and, and numbers of you have mentioned, for instance, that you have full-day physical get-togethers beyond the end of the Institute, and that's exactly what we expect to have happen. So we want to hear where you are. We want other states to be able to hear where you are so that we can cross-pollinate the best ideas and you guys can benefit from each other. Um, there will also be some very limited time for some feedback today. So at the end of presentations, I hope a few things happen. Number one, other states that have either positive comments or questions, remember this is an opportunity for us to cross-pollinate and learn from each other. Please type them in the chat as we go through. Um, we have, again, these SMEs just keep on giving. I've noted several of the SMEs have logged in today. Um, and guys, if you have comments, questions, advice, feel free to type it in the chat because at the end of each state presentation. I'm going to tackle those questions for the presenter if they come in and also ask the leadership at ETA to offer any guidance or feedback that they get uh, just by listening to your short presentations. My method here is I want to make sure that you guys are aligned with them and therefore everybody knows where we're headed between now and that final plan presentation uh, which is due January 13th. And again, after the presentations today, I'll quickly review the next steps, make sure you know what's available to you in between now and then, and uh, make sure that we have the date set for a couple touch point informal conference calls between us and the state facilitators. So that's what we're about for today. In the process, again, each state presents in alphabetical order. I posted the order <laughs> it takes him so long. in the uh, chat window. Um, the open chat will allow people to post questions or comments from other states. And then following each state, focus first on positives. If people have positive rea reactions, I'd love to hear it. And then if there's a question or cr critical feedback, uh, constructive feedback, we'll address that as well. And then we'll go on to, to each state following that. Okay? So that's how we're going to handle the event today. And again, what I'm going to do, Gary, is ask you, if you would, to um, uh, 
bring Ray up as the presenter from the state of California. Um, and Ray, we're going to turn the controls over to you and get a quick update on what California has been all about. And Gary, the timer should be at 10 minutes. Okay, we can go ahead and get started then. So, well, it's with great pleasure that I find myself again at the starting position. So, <laughs> good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Ray Bell. I'm with the EDD Workforce Services Branches Program Communication Unit. So, go ahead and advance my slide. I'll just go ahead and begin with a brief background with how we selected our chosen strategy. California has about 1.5 million unemployed persons and a fairly active social media participation. We currently have over 15,000 Facebook and Twitter followers with over wow. 2 million views on YouTube. We receive a fair amount of feedback from our UI claimants from these platforms. So with that in mind, we see room for, for expansion. Therefore, California selected increased use of social media for outreach and service delivery as a strategy to advance for the Reemployment Connections Initiative. So where we're going, by building a stronger, efficient, and expanded online labor exchange with our customers and employers and partners, by increasing the number of job seekers using social media as a resource to employment and training, and by incorporating the use of social media platforms with tra traditional reemployment services. So our vision for our initiative is California envisions an inclusive approach that bridges the gap between long-term unemployment insurance claimants and reemployment services by integrating the unemployment insurance system with the workforce system and the burgeoning use of social media as an employment resource for customers. The EDD providers and partners will parallel the services for UI claimants with those as job seekers, eliminating the differentiation between these two customer types. The EDD will incorporate an expanded social media platform with traditional reemployment services to conduct outreach and service delivery, improving the connection with our customers' needs, allowing the opportunity to make adjustments based on customers' feedback and increase our brand awareness. This initiative will strengthen the connection between our customers, employment counselors, and employers, and lead these new job seekers to more quickly return to the workforce. And we will pledge to provide continuous improvement. Next slide, please. So the goals for our initiative are basically streamlining the workforce system and UI services to increase the number of job seekers while decreasing the number of UI claimants by implementing an expanded social media platform. Strengthen the connection between our customers, employment counselors, employers, and partners by use of social media and reduce the span of time between UI claimants receiving benefits and reemployment, and improving our overall communication in real time using social media. Basically, pretty straightforward. Next slide. California will attempt to move the needle um, by aligning our policies. So we will review our UI and workforce service policies, identifying areas for improvement and to implement social media opportunities. We will work with our public affairs office to develop a communication strategy. And we will find leveraging opportunities within the department. Currently, our UI branch is implementing a system upgrade and is working with a focus group, which we intend to push out our social media survey with our vendor. California will track and measure our progress using Google Analytics, Insights, Bit.ly, and the number of views from YouTube. We will evaluate the number of UI claimants and the amount of UI benefits dispersed evaluate attendance from workshop and events sponsored by EDD, and perform a closeout survey. We are fortunate enough to have within our public affairs branch a web content usability group 
who handles the social media efforts of our branch. Next slide, please. So California recognizes our major challenges while implementing this strategy as time. And currently, right now, of putting out a contract for um, our vendor takes about three months. So that puts us out into about March for securing a vendor. And uh, we have the Web Content Usability Group, which is a staff of about four persons. They currently monitor our Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube sites. We realize that there may be some resistance uh, with the use of implementing social media and that we will have to work with our staff and our customers and anticipate changing uh, some attitudes about using the social media. And we also know that we have to, with sequestration and our budget cuts, that we will be doing more with less resources across the board. So basically, next slide. So basically, as long as we can um, obtain the support from our SMEs that um, we feel we'll be able to implement a successful strategy and uh, we look forward to progressing this initiative and making strides. And uh, that concludes our presentation. Well, first off, Ray, uh, thank you very much. Um, to each state, let me say thank you all for completing the team roster. Some of you did that here. Some of you did it in separate Excel sheets. We've gotten them all and appreciate it. To Gay's point, Ray, can you just speak for to a moment before we go to any questions or feedback comments to <clears throat> kind of where you progressed over the course of the institute in terms of getting the right people around your table and building the right leadership group? We were able to turn that corner, as you stated earlier in the institute, and finalize our team roster. And I'm happy to report that I have several of our members present with me. So. Um, that was definitely a first step in making some progress towards this, getting our draft plan together, getting our whole team to the table. Well, I appreciate that, and I appreciate the effort. I think a lot, number of states are there, and just a heads up to the other states, I'm going to ask the same question of everyone. And now that we have the roster, too, we can give you any feedback that, that are worthwhile and even share them uh, with ETA. And based on pilot state experience, tell you if we think that there's a you know somebody missing or not but I want to recognize you Ray and your predecessor and frankly all the states who I know had some difficulty at the front end of this uh, the roster certainly seems to be filled out uh, further than it was uh, at least as far as I knew at the beginning so I appreciate all those efforts there so I'm going to look for comments or questions from the room I have not seen any I would welcome those to come into the chat window but absent those, let me go back to the team in, um, at ETA and see what kind of reactions or comments you'd like to offer to California before we move on. Sure. Thanks, Rick, and thanks, Ray. This is Amanda. Um, it, was, it was great to hear this first summary, and uh, it really, we're really interested and uh, grateful that you're looking at so many options for metrics. Um, keeping an eye on what success is, is obviously very important um, when you're looking at uh, decreasing the time it takes for UI claimants to receive reemployment services. Um, one thing that, that struck me um, when you mentioned that you're, you're likely to face some resistance to social media, that's, that's definitely, I think, something that the pilot states have had experience with, and I know you've probably talked with them over the last couple of weeks about that. Um, I think we have some tools based on that learning that we can share with you um, pretty quickly. And something that we've seen be successful is looking, and I think, I think you alluded to this, uh, Ray, but some social media training for frontline staff and how they can talk with UI claimants and job seekers about using social media and becoming more comfortable with it um, could be really important to your, to your future success. Um, I also just want to mention, while I know you are focused on social media, that 
um, looking beyond uh, that and <laughs> other resources available and certainly as we move forward with other technical assistance that we mentioned, um, encourage California to think about taking advantage so. of that. I know it's it's adding more, um, but maybe the time is right as you've shaped your team um, and gotten new people involved to, to take another look too at other opportunities that might be here through these uh, technical assistance resources. Anybody else in the room here at ETA have comments? Number Kentucky, anyone? We're good. Okay, Ray, thank you. First off, Amanda, thanks for the, the, the comments and the feedback. And by the way, on the subject of training, I'm reminding folks, and I think most of you know this, we have talked about that a lot. Amanda is quite right. We have some assets that have been pledged by pilot states. If you guys were on the chat, one of our chats, Mike actually put up from Minnesota a whole curriculum that they have available. We will work behind the scenes to make sure we fill that in. And if it isn't already on the database on the RC Institute website, it will be. So that will be available to California and others. So great catch, Amanda. Any final comments, Ray, before we move on? Uh, not at this time, but thank you very much. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. We appreciate your comments and your, uh, your thoughtful participation. And now we're going to turn over to the great state of Georgia. Gary, if you would reset the game clock in minutes and bring Georgia up. Hey. Um, you're on. Hey, hey, this is Patrick from Georgia. Um, uh, so we can get through this slide pretty quick. Um, okay, so uh, I'm the Director of Program Development here, which is a title for basically a jack-of-all-trades. Um, I was tasked to help out uh, this great group that we have here in Georgia to uh, kind of go through the Institute and all that kind of stuff. So this is kind of where we're at. Um, we are looking to build a one-stop portal for customers to give job seekers, UI claimants, employers the ability to quickly navigate through multiple web applications. So currently we've got a bunch of legacy systems that we're in the process of bringing together. This portal actually will help us do that by giving us a singular goal for each of those programs between the UI and the ES, which is the employment services. Um, we also are looking to expand our social media strategy um, so that we can connect more employers with the talent that Georgia has. We've got a growing technical college system. We've got a growing university system as well as great vocational schools. So we're really trying to get the people that are coming out of that and those that have already been in the workforce to get back into the positions that they can actually enjoy and actually um, make money with. Um, the future phases will be to expand our portal into um, allowing our workforce staff to have access to uh, a portal of their own, um, as well as bringing in external partners that can help add um, events and other pieces like that into the portal itself. Uh, it's, a, it's an overarching idea. It's kind of the umbrella idea of... Uh, of being a portal. Um, the goals, easy. Single sign-on access to EES and UI. This makes life easier for everybody, including us. Uh, instead of having to reset 10 different passwords, you get to reset one. That's always nice, considering that's one of the biggest things our IT people and career center people have to deal with. Um, a dashboard that allows access to most used information in the ES and UI system. It gives people access to the things that they actually need to see, not the rest of the stuff that they've read a hundred times. This makes it easier for everybody in the end. Um, expanded analysis and use of social media, it's pretty basic. In order to talk to people, you have to know what people want to listen to. This will give us the ability to do that, the analysis of what is going on on social media, doing A and B testing with Twitter, with Facebook, with emails, all of those type of things. Next is integration of public and private sector information to the dashboard. As I said earlier, um, we want this information to come in so that people can get a wider view of what's going on with employers. So if we can get... Uh, like the City of Atlanta development areas, uh, more State of Georgia development stuff, if we can pull all this in, our people will be able to see what is going on better, and not only can our workforce staff help out the 
people looking for work, but the people looking for work can see all these great events that are going on throughout the state to help them out. Um, moving the needle, uh, as I said, it's an, the strategic plan will ensure the design of Georgia's new ESUI, WOTC, and tax systems so that they're actually an effective customer-centric online service delivery system. We need all of these things to talk to each other because for the last however long, three decades or so, they haven't. Uh, we have a great opportunity because of this institute to push those things forward through this portal system. It also gives us the ability to stage a more aggressive expanded social media strategy so that we can promote what we're doing with these systems to allow people to access information easier. And then both of these things allow us to track who's actually using the dashboard. Are they not having to go into the career centers as much? Um, are they using social media to talk to employers, to talk to us, to talk to the people that they actually need to talk to? These are all customer-centric things, um, and we're really trying hard to make sure that our customers are the ones that benefit as well as us in the efficiency side of things. Challenges. <laughs> Senior management. That's always how it's going to happen. Luckily, our crew has very good relationships with their, their managers, and we've got great relationships with the chief of staff and the CIO. They're going to help us make this something that's just great for everybody. Not only this, it'll look great in the PR standards for the commissioner, who in our state is actually elected as well. Um, so getting the one-stop portal integrated into the design of all of these projects that we're working on is a challenge. There's no way around it. They're different systems that do different things at different times for different people. We got to make them all do the one thing for everybody. It's going to be tough, but it's well worth the project. Um, the other challenge is finding everybody that actually is going to be part of this. This could grow into a 30, 40 person group that because of all the different pieces that are associated with it. It looks like it's going to be fun. It looks like it's going to be, you know, a real challenge, but that's where you get the good stuff from. Also, we've been having to deal with budget cuts here in Georgia, so that means a decreased availability of personnel hours. I think everybody feels that and everybody understands it, but we're just putting that straight out there so everybody sees it as that challenge. Also, we've got a very interesting culture here at DOL that's been around for a long time, and technology has not always been on the forefront of what we're doing. That's something that we have to change for us as well as for our customers. We've done surveys recently that say our customers rank somewhere between, I don't use technology, and I'm a genius at technology. <laughs> so the problem is, is we've got this huge range of people, and we need to be able to, to push this portal so that everybody can actually use it. Um, you know, we've got to open up our social media stuff to allow more people to talk back to us, as well as us being able to talk to them in the language that they actually understand. Um, we also have to main in, maintain in-person contact with our customers, because some just do not use technology. It's just the way it is, and we've got to work with those people as well. Another challenge is we need money. Anybody out there wants to send us some checks, we'd be more than happy to use it for this. But otherwise, we get to work with the governor's staff and the OPB, as well as our legislators, to make sure that we have the money to fund everything that we're working on. Um, requests from here. You know, continued access to the SMEs and the Institute pilot states is going to be great for us, especially for people that have used um, Capgemini's products or Burning Glass. Those are two of the big things that we're working on right now, and any information that anybody has from these would be spectacular. So, yeah. We would also love, um, you know, any information on developing customer surveys, um, analyzing data and establishing measurements. Uh, we've done all those things internally, but there's always a better way to do things, so we'd be very much open to seeing how other people have done those and used them successfully. And then there's our roster. So if anybody's got any questions, give me a yell. Well, first off, um, Patrick, great job. 
And um, before I turn back to the room and to ETA for their thoughts, um, can you just speak quickly to where you've, you met, you were very eloquent, by the way, about talking in terms of the challenge of getting senior leadership buy-in. I know in Georgia, I have a little personal experience there. You're one of the states that has double trouble, if you will, in that regard, because you've got GDOL managing OUI and uh, ES, and you've got the Governor's Workforce Board has just been taken over. Doing WIA and all sorts of stuff. Exactly. So we're aware that the challenge is something there, and I see you pointed it out. But right. speak to me about how you've been able to expand or build the right team during the course of the Institute, give VTA a little sense of where you think you started, where you are today, and where you're headed? Well, we started with, we, well, we started behind the eight ball. We, uh, we didn't find out until the Friday before Thanksgiving that we were doing this, so it was a huge rush. Um, all the people on our team are kind of the core people that we have listed up here. They're the ones that have the expertise in all of the points that we're trying to hit. From here, we're going to reach out to more of the IT side of things as well as to the people that work with our current roster to make sure that while Scooby's getting done, while Burning Glass is getting done, we're talking to the correct people to make sure that we have our fingers in that same pie to make sure that everything is getting done so that we can, when we are creating this portal while they're creating these new systems, everything is natively integrated with each other. So we'll be pulling in, especially from the security side. But, you know, there are many vendors that we're going to have to pull in. There's, you know, other people throughout the every department in labor that we're going to have to pull together to make this work. And that's going to be part of our strategic plan. Now that we have the idea of what we're doing and kind of a, a wireframe to say about it, we need to find all the people that can actually fill in the missing questions and the people to ask questions that we don't even know that we need to ask. So we will find those as we work through with the rest of the groups that are actually building their systems. Great. That, that's a perfect representation of where you are, and I appreciate your honesty and the fact also that you commit to continue to to develop this idea of where you need to go with your team as part of your strategic plan. And oh, yeah. I want to turn it over to ETA. Before I do, I want to thank uh, Iowa for jumping in and offering that they have some experience with BG. So you just made a connection, and I'll remind everybody, not all the – there's expertise in the implementation states you can tap to, not just – Right. Just me. So good job there, guys. But let me turn back to ETA now with any comments or questions or feedback they might have for Georgia. Hi, Patrick and Georgia team. Um, this is Gay. Um, Hello. First of all, um, I, let me add my congratulations for really tackling some of the hard stuff here uh, and to really trying to get to integration that is uh, focused on, that's very customer centric and, and really going to help um, improve your service delivery. Um, Rick already uh, acknowledged your issue about the senior leadership. I just would echo that. I, I think that it is. Um, it, it does require uh, a fair amount of top-down championship, honestly. So even if you have people who are working day-to-day -to, -day to do some of the work, you really need that leadership there at the, in the mix to, to help drive it um, because it, it, it is, it's a change initiative. I, I mean, it's a major culture change. Um, right. And I would also add, you, you've got that one of the challenges you didn't list. You're also in the middle of uh, a UI modernization project with a consortium, yep. which is making it uh, even more, more challenging. That's correct. Yeah, and the best part is is when it comes to senior leadership, um, our chief of staff is very much behind this, and it's just getting everybody else to kind of go, oh, yeah, this actually is a good idea, not just, oh, it's another project, but this is something that we need to do yeah, I think because it will help us innovate what we are doing. Yeah, I, I think uh, you're very wise to not think of this as a project. This is a this is a change in your service delivery that everybody oh, yeah. has to be in, invested in, um, and and that's terrific. I um, if it, I know that you haven't really listed uh, WIA as a partner, but I think if there was any way, and even if we can help facilitate that, if there's a way to bring them to the table, they they that's kind of our 
our version two. Like uh-huh. as as we go through the strategic plan, we will be bringing in people like WIA. There's a whole consortium in the city of Atlanta that we need to bring in. But those are, I mean, they're not version two, maybe they're version one, one or one, two, but they are definitely going to be within the strategic plan that we hand in. Right. Yeah, definitely. So again, I, uh, congratulations on 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 tackling the the uh, a fairly hefty lift here, and uh, <laughs> we're anxious to support your uh, success. Awesome, that's great to hear. Thank you, Gay, and thanks again, Patrick. Great job, really good presentation. Thoughtful. Thank you. Appreciate your being open to those comments, and also want to thank Kentucky and I over stepping up. You got a couple of burning glass helpers no. uh, there for you. So good job, guys. All right, let's keep the uh, keep the progress going. We're going to turn to Illinois. And, Gary, if you could reset the game clock. Illinois, you're up. Take us away. Great. Uh, I'm Matt Bruce. I'm the facilitator for Illinois, and I'm actually the director of the Chicagoland Workforce Funder Alliance. We're a, a funder collaborative, and we work with all sorts of workforce stakeholders in the state. So it was uh, a pleasure and enlightening for me to, to, to do this uh, this function. Um, so I'll get right into where we're going. Um, for us, the, the, the big context that we're always mindful of is that there is a, a large effort in Illinois that actually goes beyond the employment system to include education, uh, both higher education and secondary and post-secondary, uh, as well as uh, social services called the Illinois Shared Learning Environment. And so that involves both our, our ESUI and our WEA partners, as well as those other state agencies. And so... That's great, and I think long-term it's going to be a great thing for the state. That will sort of be a common front door for all sorts of uh, that information uh, for residents, uh, constituents. Um, in the near term, I think what where we're going out of this to is that you know we don't have to wait for aisle to come because it, it, that, that's a big chunk of work. And actually, uh, DOL is, has been supportive of that through the, the Workforce Data Quality uh, initiative work. Um, but that, that's going to it's going to take a while for all that to, to happen. And in the near term, we, we can we can, from this institute we can you know move the needle on integration sooner. So both the coordination of, of these employment systems, but also of, of the efforts them, themselves. Um, I'll start to get into that. So our uh, state goals are there's uh, three three areas. One is that um, around coordinating the communications. Uh, better across all of our workhorse uh, uh, partners and, and, and stakeholders. So, and by uh, the communication, we we have different tools at uh, at our disposal in terms of the you know what we is using, what uh, our unemployment system is using, and, and also different uh, resources. So, um, different uh, constituent lists to, to to reach out to, different presences on social media already established or uh, presence on the web already established. Um, but we're not coordinating all those resources very well. So we're not learning from each other well in terms of what our we uh, partners are already learning from social media. We haven't learned those lessons in, in other parts of, of the workforce system. Um, that's the uh, first one. The second is uh, similar but greater coordination around the, the use of, of the actual virtual tool. So you know, beyond just the communication, uh, the, sort of uh, the, the, the interaction and the presence on in, in virtual or creation of virtual communities. Uh, and so we, for this, I think we'd like to get beyond experimentation. That, that's sort of what we've done so far. There's been some virtual career fairs in Illinois, and, and we've learned some lessons from them. But one, we haven't perhaps shared those lessons across all of our partners. And two, we haven't sort of gotten beyond that experimental stage where it's sort of institutionalized as, you know, this is just something that the workforce system uses to connect with its constituents and customers and, 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 and uh, uh, businesses. And uh, the third is, uh, and I, I'm going to make a correction here, so it's not just WorkNet and not just JobLink, so it's Illinois WorkNet. My, my, uh, my state partners uh, uh, wanted to correct me, and I'm afraid, I, I'm, I'm sorry I didn't get the correction onto the slide, and it's IllinoisJobLink.com. Uh, um, so we do have the, these two systems, and uh, they're, they're both great in terms of what they're strong at doing, um, but but they do uh, you know create challenges for us serving customers because because we do have that you know problem that we keep talking about of you know multiple sign-ins and uh, the sort of fluidity between these online tools is not as strong as it could be. So while I'll in the future that shared learning environment will will eventually you know address this problem, 
in, in, in the near term, we, we, can, we can do more to, to coordinate better across these, these systems. Um, the next uh, slide about moving the, the needle. Uh, I think a big takeaway from us from the Institute was that you, you can't just jump in whole hog and, and do all, all of these things. Um, it, the, the, the smart way to go is to figure out where you are now because you're, in, no matter who you are, you're not starting from zero. So uh, in, in a lot of the things that we want to do, it, we want to sort of find out w what is our baseline. So um, as part of our plan, we, we'll survey the workforce system itself, so our, our staff and colleagues around the state, because in our small group, we have, you know, the way that we think these systems are interacting or not interacting, uh, but we really should verify that uh, across the state and see if, you know, uh, the workforce system and all of its uh, staff uh, how they're using these systems and how they see them connecting or, or, or not connecting. Um, and the same thing for uh, externally, so surveying employers and, and job seekers about how, how they are currently interacting with, with the workforce system and, and with things like social media. Uh, so both these are about, you know, getting the baseline, where are we starting from, so we can think about how do we, how do we start to take the, the first steps from there. Um, and the third item is really about taking uh, some of those first steps. So we, we've known from the beginning that we want to, you know, move the needle on these virtual career fairs um, and, and do it in, in such a way so that we, we can learn from them and, and make them uh, something that the entire uh, workforce system is, is, is using. Um, so in terms of our, our challenges, um, as I think it, a lot of the other challenges that, that have been said before are similar in Illinois but um, really coordinating across all the different leaders and agencies is, is key. I mean, it's just the – and we saw that in, in the challenges of just bringing this group together. Um, we're going to have to continue to uh, put effort in, into that. Um, but also, I, I think this is true in, in government a lot, at least in, in my experience. I, I came to, you know, this work in philanthropy out of, you know, working in the, in, in the WIA system is that you're always competing with, with whatever the next priority is. And so, um, as sort of has been said before, this, this can't be just a project. This has to be a sort of a culture change or, or seen as, as uh, a, a change movement. Because otherwise, if it becomes just a project, it'll just end up competing with all the other various projects, and it, it'll, it'll probably um, lose in, in, in that competition, or at least it'll, it'll lose some of its... Um, uh, some of its power. So our request, one of the things that would be very helpful from, and I think this would have to come from, from ETA, is, is really greater clarity about what future supports are going to be available. So like when, as part of this institute, when you talked about this um, consultant and the TA that's going to be available, about looking at your systems, that, that kind of uh, information that, you know, this is coming is, is very helpful because then we can sort of figure out, well, okay, well, how can we use that to, to move the needle further in ways we're talking about. Um, so as much of that guidance as you can give about, you know, what, what are tools that, that are going to be available uh, w would be helpful. Because then, you know, you, you can only plan so far or make, um, put the stuff in, in work plans so much when, when you don't have uh, additional resources. Um, and all, all different kinds of support can be helpful, but uh, it, the, what makes them more helpful is, is if you're given the flexibility to, um, use them in the in, in the local context, um, and then we have our state roster, and that's it. Uh, I I feel like I was a, a fast talker, but are, are <laughs> no, you're doing pretty good there, buddy. Um, just again, same question before we turn um, to to ETA for comments and feedback. Give us a sense of where you where your team is, where you think it, versus where it started, Matt, and where you think it needs to be to get done what you want to get done. Yeah, so I think we're actually in a, in a much better place than where we started. I mean, as part of this, we we were able to get you know our our, our partners from from the WIA side of things on board, and that, that was great because it really uh, changes uh, or, or or fills in the whole picture of the workforce system for Illinois because. Uh, on the WIA side of things, they'd actually done a lot more in things like social media. And when I talked about Illinois having some experience with virtual career fairs, it was on that side of things where, where, where that experience comes from. So um, I think that's been a, 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 a big uh, progress for us. Um, okay. in, in terms of where we're going, I think 
um, one of the, the challenges is, is going to be is, is how to get consensus across the people that we need consensus from about how a, a particular effort like this fits into a larger and very long-term context of this Illinois shared learning environment. Um, mm-hmm. And I think there's there's going to be that natural tension of, you know, well, we, we have this long-term plan that's going to solve these things, but in the in, in the near term, the, you know, the Illinois shared learning environment is, is not up and running being that front door yet. It's going to take a long time. And so in the meantime, our customers are still struggling with, you know, some of the, the negative repercussions of, of these, uh, the, of the way the systems are now. So what, mm-hmm. what can we do in, in the near term that, that does make sense? Awesome. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Matt, for your time and for your presentation. I'm going to turn it back to ETA now for feedback, comments, or questions. Sure. Thanks, Rick. This is Amanda. Um, thanks for your presentation, Matt. Um, I have to say I am a um, an Illinoisan, so <laughs> go team. Um, it certainly sounds like you are um, really in the process of taking a lot in and mapping out, as you said um, earlier, you know, just that first step of recognizing where things are now and where you want to be. Um, so, I, and I, I love that you just mentioned how important it was to involve WIA and the ES and UI systems together and share information across there. I think that's going to be really important going forward. It sounds like um, Patrick and the Georgia team are doing some of that too, so maybe you all can connect over time on, on some of those matters as, as you go forward. Um, and I, I also just want to um, mention, you know, it, part of this planning process really is, a, it, it, I don't think I articulated it well earlier, um, and we'll try to do a little better now, but taking advantage of the opportunity to really drill down and be specific in your next plan um, for January, and it, it is hard work. Um, it does take partners across different areas that may not have been used to partnering um, or have been trying in different ways over time, but you know, really take advantage of getting to more specifics um, going forward of what you see coming out of this. I know you mentioned the virtual job fairs as a, as a key piece, um, and, and you know, what's next after that? Where do you, where else do you want to expand your use of social media? Um, you are asking for more details on the resources that we might have available, and we are certainly happy to provide that. Um, we'll, we'll do that <laughs> offline, but um, Jen Pertle here, and of course we'll, we'll work with Byron Zaitema and the team in the Chicago Re- Regional Office as we make those resources available going forward. So um, we appreciate your, you know, your heads up and reaching out to us on those things. Um, and I think you know, another, another challenge that you mentioned with just access to resources, um, I think it was you know, uh, Ray earlier from California mentioning the idea of doing more with less. I think that's been kind of a, a key piece of sort of the thought behind this uh, one of the one of the thoughts behind this overall reemployment connections, um, moving these systems to better um, serve the customer and integrate the services available to them. It, it, you know that's kind of the bottom line of doing more with less. And so I hear you completely on um, the need for resources to do that, but also you know really challenge your team to think about you know when those resources aren't there, that's kind of the time you have to think of new ways, different ways of doing things. So. Great job in in bringing together your partners and uh, committing to this process, and uh, we are very interested in you know supporting you and let us know how we can do that. Great. Amanda, thanks so much, and Matt, you too, and everybody in uh, Illinois. Nice job. You have obviously every a lot of sweat and tears have happened here, and you've obviously made some good progress. Amanda, appreciate your comments and your feedback, and I know that uh, there can be some uh, further discussion between Jen Pertle and folks as we move forward. Okay, great. So we are now teeing up our team in Iowa. And Iowa, are you there? Gary, please reset the game clock to 10 minutes. Yep, we're here. Go for it. Uh, good afternoon, at least if you're in the central part of the country, it's afternoon. Um, this is Carrie Coons. I'm the Division Administrator for Communications and Labor Market Information. 
um, but tends to be one of the units that brings a lot of different groups together in our area, which is how I ended up as the facilitator. I've been with state government for 18 years, but only in this role for about six months. But Iowa is kind of fortunate in the sense that um, we're a little unique. Our unemployment, our ES, employment services, our, our WIA, we're all in one agency together. And our regions are still grandfathered as far as we go, so um, we actually have a lot of control of that at the state level. So the nice thing is there is we have all of the partners to bring together very quickly and cohesively in these kinds of things. Um, one of our challenges, though, is Iowa gets to say that we have 4.6% unemployment rate, which is great. It's really low, and we're down to about 76,000 people unemployed, but the, the individuals that are unemployed now are the ones that are getting even harder to place, so it's really critical that we get these individuals connected with the workforce out there. Um, and, you know, as we're looking at moving more into an uh, electronic age, that's an expectation out of our governor's office as well, as well, is that we move more of our services electronically. We're using portals and those kinds of things um, to move that forward. So Iowa is really focusing and, and planning on um, working on pieces that hit all four of the transformational areas related to the reemployment strategies grant, because we think we have areas that can benefit from all of those. But the real core piece of it is developing um, the integrated ESUI system um, that has a platform that works as a portal for everyone, utilizes all sorts of digital media and social networking, and really automating that case management so our customers get the full benefit of all of the services in one spot. Um, Iowa's goals for the program um, relate to developing an integrated customer registration system based on client profiles very similar to social media platforms. Um, we have an SBR grant that is also helping us in this area, and we hope that that's going to all roll out this fall, so we're really excited about that. Um, we've been working on automating our back-end processes to uh, really triage our customers right away when they come in. We've been piloting a version of it in our one-stops, but we really see this, this next step is really taking it to the full level, and hopefully it will roll out with the profile as well. And then um, our building our automated case management system, as it's been referenced before, Burning Glass has been helping us with pieces of that. Um, and then along the way, we're going to be having a system that allows us to connect a lot of client data and really analyze that and develop some of our metrics. And we, Iowa was one of the recipients of the Workforce Data Quality Initiative grant. So that funding has built a large portion of that data warehouse, which is really um, fitting nicely into this overall program and, and process as we move through the reemployment connections. Um, right now, Iowa is currently using a system of legacy IT systems across UI and ES, and they're on mainframes. It's very costly to the agency. So anything that we can do um, that helps us move into this new portal direction um, is going to immediately yield cost savings for the agency and at the same time that it streamlines our services, which makes it much easier to sell across the board as everyone's dealing with tighter budgets and those kinds of things. Um, we are still working on developing our metrics, and part of that is becoming uh, driven by a couple of things. One is one of the things is we have an outside group currently doing some surveying of our customers to see what they want to see in those kinds of portals and what they want to see on the social media messaging. And then when we know what we're our final products are that we want to deliver, we'll develop all of our metrics around that. So that's going to be um, a little bit still time consuming and coming. We should have all of our um, outside focus group information back in by the end of the month, and we'll start you know, further down into that process. And really, some of our overall biggest challenges um, exist in a couple of areas. One is IT. Not only do we have to deal with IT within our own department, but then we have to deal with the state-level IT enterprise um, and making sure that this project stays as a priority. And that can be difficult when you're working with multiple departments competing for limited funding and resources to do the work. So that's a key piece that we have to um, rely on a lot of continued input um, to keep that, uh, keep that project up at the forefront to make sure that it doesn't get um, put on the back burner replaced by something that somebody else would consider a priority. And then we're constantly working at streaming our, our policies. And a really big piece of that, as a lot of individuals have noted, is around the social media. The state government is pretty tight on how they'll allow us to use it. Currently, the department utilizes 
Facebook and Twitter, but it's all completely on an outbound push out of information. There isn't any back and forth um, with our customers, and that's just because of the way some of the policies are written and the tighter security. So we're working with um, state government as a whole through the overall policy department on getting those rewritten and have quote unquote volunteered to be a test department as a way to get this moving to allow some of those pieces to, to lighten up and uh, keep going forward. So um, with that, then um, you know, our request for technical assistance is I think what a lot of people have mentioned already is just continued connections with some of the subject matter experts, not necessarily the people from the um, pilot states, but just overall with mayor and mayor and uh, EPA and those kinds of things to make sure that we can get questions answered um, you know, and really find out what is working um, with others. And then on the point of our state team roster, we sent in a separate sheet. We actually have a very large team. I think we have a lot of really critical players. We have UI, um, employment, WIA, IT, across the board, but um, that does create its challenges then too. We have yet to have a meeting where we have everybody all together in the room, and that's a critical piece that we're really pushing for after the holidays. Leading up until now, it doesn't look like it's gonna be a possibility. And we've been having lots of subgroup meetings but it's really driving that um, everyone gets together and we've got a couple of dates scheduled where our director has graciously made it mandatory that everyone attend those meetings. So hopefully that's going to push that piece forward for us. Um, other than that, if anyone has any questions. Well, Carrie, thank you. That was really well done. And you're not the only one who's had difficulty getting everyone together, but like others, I'm thrilled that you've gotten dates and that your director is you know, putting the power, their, their kind of formal power behind the initiative, that tells me something about you having built some process ownership that you're really going to need. So that's good news, and congratulations. Uh, I haven't seen any questions from the group, so I want to turn it right back to ETA to give you some comments and suggestions. Okay. Hi, Carrie and Illinois team. This is Gay. Um, I, uh, sorry, uh, Iowa. I've got my eyes fixed up today. It's Friday. My apologies. Um, I also would like to compliment you on the senior leadership here. I know uh, Teresa. I know Teresa, and she's a, she's a great uh, workforce leader. So I think you all have um, have um, uh, that's a, a good champion there, uh, and you all have, have really I think uh, embraced the heart of the Reemployment Connections Initiative. Uh, I think, and this, and by really taking on all of the transformational elements, that's. Um, it's bold and uh, and it's aggressive, and we love you for doing that. Um, I I also hear that you're um, uh, uh, trying to connect things that are already in play. Your, the work with the workforce data quality initiative, for example, I think that's terrific. Um, one thing I I uh, was struck by that you and Georgia both are sort of in the similar boats with regard to things you're going to tackle. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking maybe if there's a, there might be some opportunity to buddy up uh, some of our uh, our new states as they do their work. Um, with regard to social media, um, I think uh, just a reminder that there is a social media guide, uh, and, and uh, Rick mentioned the fact that um, Minnesota had a full training curriculum, uh, uh, so lots of resources, I think, to pull from as you uh, – uh, and also, I know that the subject, the um, pilot states also did a lot of work around policy development too. So mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of work that you can build on from from that's already been out there. Uh, I love that you're going to try to do some cost benefit analysis. We would love to see that when you do, when you uh, as you move that forward. Mm -hmm. um, so really, uh, great job. And uh, again, we want to try to support you in whatever way makes sense. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Iowa, and thank you, Gay, um, for that feedback. Wonderful. We're going to keep on moving. We're actually doing pretty well on time with not a lot to spare, but we seem to be on time as we turn to our friends in Kansas. Kansas, are you there? I was in at three. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Kansas. Yeah, this is Shelly. Can you hear me? I hear you now. Yeah. Okay. You're up. I had two mutes on, so I forgot to take the. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, you're on now. And, Go right ahead. <laughs> and we're with the team, so I'm gonna. If you can help me out with the slides, that'd be great. I'd be happy to. Just go ahead and verbally prompt me when you want me to advance. 
Okay, you can go ahead and move to um, the presenter. Again, this is Shelley Thompson, and I am the Reemployment Services Manager with the Kansas Department of Commerce. Kansas would first like to again thank the U.S. Department of Labor for selecting us to be a part of this. We feel very honored to have this opportunity along with the other states. And thank you to all the presenters of the webinar during the Institute. We greatly appreciate your expertise and time and being willing to be so open and honest with us. Um, next slide, please. Next slide. Are you looking at where you're going? Where now? Where we're going? Yeah, I don't see it, but I'll just go ahead with it. This is actually our vision statement, uh, broken down into two different bullets, and it, you'll you'll see that it's just very similar to um, the national vision and what other states before us have um, pretty much stated. Also, what I did want to point out it, for us. Everything we want to do and everything we're trying to accomplish focuses on those two key words in the first bullet, reemployment opportunities. That uh, is what it's all about for us, as I'm sure it is for, for everybody. Um, next slide, please. OK, it's up. OK, our, these are our three main goals, not necessarily in order. The first one, um, you've heard this before, to transform in the UI system. For Kansas, what we really would like to do is improve the efficiency, compatibility, and performance of both the workforce and the UI systems. Um, I'm going to jump down to that third bullet. Uh, user, the main thing there is user-friendly system. A lot of people have already talked about this before. You know, this connects back to what I talked about in our vision, just providing reemployment opportunities and making sure that it's relevant to those who use it. Um, and then, of course, that second bullet, again, this is kind of a repeat of what a lot of people have said. We want to make sure we have an outreach plan that communicates that not only to those who are using the system, but um, you know, make sure that all of us who put it together are on the same page as well. Next slide. OK, moving the needle is up. OK. so. Um, this may look like a very simple slide, but to us, this is really key. We, uh, the three words you see there, we want to increase awareness, communication, and accountability. For us, that's not only externally, but that also is internally. For awareness, um, we talk so much about how a lot of people still don't even know about the services we have now, and you know we want to change it and improve it, so we want to make sure yeah. When we do that, we they uh, know about the system as well. But we also, even within our own team, want to Im increase our awareness because not we, none, um, not everyone on the team even knows all the services that we have to offer within our own agencies. So that's huge for us, which we kind of learned as we've been talking as a team. The second bullet, communication. Again, it, that's just that's both internally and externally. Um, we uh, want to make sure our systems are talking to each other. We want to make sure that our staff are talking to each other, and that either we talk the same language or we talk a language that everyone can understand. Because um, I think so sometimes we forget about that. And accountability. Um, this is really key for us because. The team that you're going to see listed later has has been meeting for uh, this institute, but we've actually had a team that's been meeting since March kind of talking about a lot of these things. Um, and now we really feel like it's time to hold ourselves accountable, um, to not lose focus on what we've started, and really not uh, – not getting stuck oh. in the weeds, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. And we want to, uh, we don't have this on the slide, but uh, in order to measure this, we'd like to see an increased usage of the system, our services, um, you know, kind of what other people have said before, better outcomes, so reduced time on UI benefits. And again, that key, two keywords I keep going back to. Uh, reemployment opportunities, improving reemployment opportunities for our customers, and then um, also just having positive customer uh, 
satisfaction results. Um, next slide, please. Okay, challenges are up. Thank you. So these probably aren't going to be a shock to anyone, because I think Kansas probably on every phone call has mentioned the antiquated UI IT system, um, which is something that's probably our biggest challenge. And other people have mentioned staff resources and um, limited financial resources. And I think Amanda, when she responded earlier, I can't remember what state, but um, mentioned doing less with more, which is definitely something we are we all have been doing and are going to have to continue to do. Um, the positive thing is we do have leadership both within our UI and we in ES systems who are completely on board with this. And now it's just a matter of um, making sure we're utilizing our resources and staffing in the right manner. Um, and again, making sure we're sharing information between the systems and, um, and our staff. Uh, we do not have a slide on additional technical assistance. That doesn't mean that we don't don't need any. It's just um, we actually are meeting for the first time as a full team next Wednesday in person for an eight-hour meeting. And so I think we will have a better understanding of what our technical assistance needs are at that time, or at least be able to better define what those needs are. Right. Um, and I think the rest of the slides, we did our team roster a little bit different. We gave everybody some, oh, OK. There's a team roster right there. And kind of as I mentioned, hopefully, Rick, I'm answering your question here. The team that you see before you is the team that we started with, which is exciting to me because I think we really had a, a great team to begin with and have throughout this institute have really put a lot of time and effort into this. We uh, do have a couple um, couple more folks we'd like to add to the team. We're meeting with the new UI IT director actually after this webinar. Uh, we think he is definitely key, as uh, you saw, one of our barriers um, is the antiquated IT system. So hopefully we will uh, catch him up to speed on what we're doing and, and where we want to go. And um, we're really looking forward to meeting as a group next Wednesday. And again, uh, thank you to everybody for uh, your time and expertise and uh, technical assistance you've provided to us throughout this. Well, Shelley, thank you so much for a really good presentation and for uh, the obvious uh, commitment that you're laying down um, for yourself and your state and to this process. We appreciate your your involvement and your comments. And I'm going to go straight to ETA now for any comments or questions or feedback. Sure. Thanks, Rick. And, and thank you, Shelley. This is Amanda here at ETA. Um, I just want to reiterate what, what Rick just said. It's great um, that you've been really diving into this process. You've really involved a great team. Um, and it, I hear that you all have been meeting in between the virtual sessions and have a regular schedule. So that is great. Um, I, I know that will position you to, to get to um, you know, the, more, the next step of the more specific plans going forward um, and, and really tackling the integration of your, your technology systems. It's a, a huge and important tackle. So, Congratulations on setting that um, setting that focus and that goal. Um, just a, a couple things, and uh, that you mentioned, you know, you're already learning from each other across your team. Um, I know you mentioned a little bit about measurement, and, and we've talked earlier about that on the call. How important it is to to get the measures of your success in place and really be thinking of those um, for the the longer term. Um, and then, you know, just another another plug in there as, as we've given to other states is as you're going along, um, you start thinking about a, a place where social media might complement the efforts, um, really thinking on the customer side of what you're going to do to integrate your technology systems. That might be a good opportunity while you do have uh, the resources focused on this effort to, to add that piece to it. So um, that's 
that's the feedback that, that I have it, um, for now. And, and again, thank you for a great presentation and, and the work that you're doing. Thank you for that feedback. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thanks so much, Amanda. And again, thank you, uh, Kansas. Great job. And, you know, all, I guess it's not normal that when doing things by alphabetical order that someone with beginning with K, like Kentucky, would always be last, but that's just how the deck has been stacked. Um, Kentucky, we appreciate you batting clean up all along through this process, and we're going to turn to you. Holly Neal, I guess, is uh, teed up in Kentucky. Gary resets the game clock, and Holly, you can take it away. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. This is Holly Neal. Um, I have my picture up there, my most recent, from Facebook. Um, I am the Communications Director here at the Office of Employment and Training, and I will go ahead and dive right in. Hello? Go for it. I can hear you. We're, we had you on mute because we were laughing. <laughs> I was getting upset because I didn't hear the laughter. <laughs> you you got your laugh, so that was awesome. Especially <laughs> oh, you haven't seen anything yet. <laughs> anyway, um, for a summary of where we're going, uh, I need to tell you where we are, which is um, dipping our toes in with our um, social media self-assessment. We obviously know we need to be immersed in social media as our uh, fellow SME states are as well. So. Our goal is for the Reemployment Connections Initiative is really a foundational development for our social media strategies. Um, you know, luckily we are um, in a state where we just went through a branding through the entire state. So um, I feel like this will be a little easier for us um, because we've all been to the table for the last two years together. So getting people together was not difficult for us at all. But we've always done everything kind of in our own department. So now with the rebranding and with this initiative, being able to have a communication strategy that um, is in one voice is what we are working toward. So our goals are to increase customer awareness of the Kentucky Career Center services through the use of social media. We have um, started Facebook, YouTube, um, and Twitter, but we just haven't done anything with it. So then once this um, grant opportunity came on board, we kind of actually sit it to the side so that we can actually have a plan and do it right. We did research while we were going through our rebranding with the states around us, and we saw that a lot of people are doing social media, but some states aren't doing it as well as others, so we just wanted to uh, be sure to get it right the first time. We want to ensure a uniform approach to social media use among our partners. This goes right along with our Kentucky Career Center rebranding that we did this summer. We want to increase our job orders um, from our employers, which is our focused talent um, side of the house. We want to increase the number of resumes from our job seekers, which is our focused career side of the house. And we want to increase the number of our job matches. So we think that this will help with our reemployment services um, theme throughout this whole social media strategy. So how are we going to move the needle? Well, since this is a foundation, I think hopefully moving the needle will be, um, we'll be able to see the low-hanging fruit and be able to obtain that pretty quickly. Our goals are to uh, build a foundation for our workforce system communication plans to focus on reemployment services by integrating social media strategies into the plan. We have communication plans, um, but we've never really had a social media and a communication plan all together. So bringing everybody to the table, like I said, and having um, one voice, I think, will really help our services. We will be able to track our success by looking at our metrics um, through social media stats, you know, like the likes and the followers, things of that nature. But we're really going to try to focus on our metrics with our burning glass application with focused career and focused talent metrics, our resumes, our job matches, things of that nature. Obviously, our challenges are like our other states around us. Um, we do not have a social media policy for our department. Um, the state obviously has a social media policy, so we're going to take that into consideration, obviously. Um, we have friends at the Department of Education here in Kentucky that has a great social media policy, so we're going to look at that as well as 
the RC website and look at what our um, pilot states are doing as well. We have lack of staff to perform social media duties, so um, we're hoping to beef that up and with this initiative as well, we think this will be a great um, starting point for us to be able to um, gain some one to be able to push these social media um, strategies and to keep the ball rolling for us. Content management for social media applications. Um, I've signed up for Hootsuite, but like I said, I don't know a hoot about Hootsuite, so um, that's what we uh, obviously need to overcome that challenge as well. And then lack of partner consensus. Like I said, going through the Kentucky Career Center rebranding, um, we've all been to the table, but in the end, we've all kind of done our own kind of communication plans and our own kind of social media. Our Office for the Blind, our Office for Vocational Rehabilitation, our local WIA offices have done social media. We just haven't done one together as one group or have a consensus. And then I had sent our uh, Excel spreadsheet, which is our state team roster, which I think includes a great group of people. We have, actually have two representatives from our um, local WIAs that are close to us here in Frankfurt that do exceptional social media for their regions. We have our Office for the Blind, our Office for Vocational Rehabilitation. Obviously, employment and training is on board. Um, we have our communications for the cabinet is with us as well. So um, we actually all meet on the 19th to start drilling down these strategic plans. We're going to play the uh, family uh, theme song when we all meet on the 19th to get everybody in the mood to work together. Can there be that close? Just let me stay for the record. Thank you. We're giving love and a family dog. Holly, first off, Thanks for the chuckle and for the laugh, and uh, it, you have you are in fact a great cleanup hitter out in your team in Kentucky to, to bring us home that way. And I would just make sure I would like to be able to subscribe to your to your music stream in the future if we could work that out. Absolutely. And, you finally, when we have meetings. We have to have fun to get anything done. Strategy. But there's nothing wrong with that. It's probably really important and. Um, I know a little bit about your branding initiative in Kentucky, and my sense is having made it through that will give you the right place of reference to make it through this. It's almost like if you can make it through branding, you can make it through anything, Holly. Um, and so I appreciate your efforts throughout, all of you in Kentucky. Uh, you guys have done great work here, and I want to turn to ETA for their comments and thoughts. Hey, Holly and Kentucky team. Um, also, uh, echo the uh, the fun uh, music it was great, I, and you picked great ones. Uh, friends is a uh, friends, and we are family. All good um, analogies for partnerships and trying to get things done together. So, uh, very terrific. Um, first of all, I I, uh, I think uh, you kind of really kind of rising to the challenge to really tackle social media as a way to augment your service delivery is uh, is great. Uh, I do know that you, um, in addition to this branding, I know uh, uh, that you have a number of initiatives uh, and, and some leaderships that's very committed to integration of your service delivery. So um, I think this will be a great compliment. I think one of your I know tomorrow is challenges perhaps, or but I'm sure you've already um, are, are ready with this. Is to, is to keep it, this the social media piece of this connected with all the other work. I think that you'll be doing uh, around uh, improved reemployment service delivery and, and integrated service delivery. Uh, but really, great job, and um, uh, really look forward to seeing uh, how you the innovation that you bring as you uh, as you move forward. Well, thanks again, Kentucky, and thank you, Gay, uh, and Amanda, and all of you guys at ETA. And, you know, probably just a minute, I wish I was creative enough uh, to have thought of a good party tune for this slide, but I do want to just offer the opportunity to say to everyone from ETA, from the leadership at ETA that is modeling the kind of integration that they're asking of from the states, to all of you guys in the states who, you know, really ramped up, as somebody, one of you said, I think it was uh, Gideon from Georgia, if I'm not mistaken, at one point said, it feels like we've gone from zero to 100 miles an hour 
in the last few days. And I have watched that progression, and I know it's been a lot of work, and I hope you take a minute, all of you, uh, from the federal level to the state level to, to congratulate yourselves on the level of energy and commitment that you've started to distribute uh, and show today. And uh, I just want to, as we close, say thank you for it's been a pleasure to be along for the ride and remind you that there are some next steps so that the end of the Institute doesn't mean that we're going away, that ETA isn't continuing to support you, or that the job is done, as you know. Uh, so ongoing support. Um, we're going to capture the feedback from today. I'm sure you guys all took notes. But if we have uh, specific ideas or thoughts from the feedback we heard, we'll email it to facilitators. Obviously, you've already mentioned you've got you know, dedicated time set up. I've been already on the calendar, many of you, to start deep diving, and you're working in teams. As you do that, any kind of support, questions, concerns, gaps that you find, jump on the website, ask the expert feature, email us directly. Um, anything we can do to help you through, we will. Remember that we have in-process review calls that are uh, at least uh, on the calendar for December 20th. That's a week from today. And then the following January 7th, the, the invitations for that uh, call are being sent out. Uh, they're either out or they're coming out today. Um, and those are just conference calls for us to touch base with state facilitators and anybody you want to bring, the purpose of which is simply to say, how are you doing? What problems or challenges are you having? What do you need from us? And um, obviously we'll include um, ETA in those calls too so that if you have any challenges, they can be a part of the process to help along. Remember, finally, as we begin the next phase of this, final plans are due to ETA on the 13th of January, close of business. And obviously you would send them to, actually those plans are ETAs, you should send them to Jen Pirtle. And then the final state presentations, we'll, we'll be getting those copies of the plans and putting together a deck and we'll be back in touch for logistic support. Remember on the 16th of January, will again all gather and the states will present to us as a collective and to ETA another opportunity for you to showcase what you've done and for us to learn from each other. So if there are any questions, um, pop them in. If not, I want to just offer an opportunity finally to say thank you and ask if Gay or Amanda want to close this out with some comments yeah. before we shut down. It came down. I was going to I am you and um, so you uh, thank you. Um, basically, you know, a, a big thank you to everyone again. I know you've put a lot of work and effort into the last couple of weeks. You had previously put work and effort into planning to apply and are continuing to put um, effort into all of this. Um, certainly, January is not the end, and um, it looks like you all are, you know, off to great starts in, in where you're headed and where you're um, where your plans are going. Thank you so much for your presentations today, um, for especially that fun ending. I, I know it is a Friday afternoon, and uh, you've had a lot of, um, of web and video and, and conference call chats over the last couple weeks. So thanks for, um, for ending this couple weeks with us and sharing uh, your progress. Yeah, and this is Kay. I, I ditto what Amanda said. and. Uh, I, I um, despite the fact that there's still more work to do, I'm going to suggest that you but I'll take the next two days off and, and breathe <laughs> and maybe enjoy the holiday season a little bit. Um, but I, I, I am pleased, so pleased to see that um, all of you are um, so well positioned now as a result of the work over the last few weeks, um, and and that uh, you really I think have got the um, the recipe for uh, for uh, getting to success. I hope some of our comments help kind of spur you on to kind of continue building those partnerships, continue to just to grow your capacity to work uh, collaboratively. And uh, we really, really look forward to seeing those plans in January. And in the meantime, really seriously, uh, have a great weekend and and uh, and a good holiday. Thanks, you guys. Thank you all. Thank you. Uh,